Hello Fermion friends, I am Matt Butcher and today we're going to talk about WebAssembly and various programming languages. Specifically, we're going to ask the question, why do some programming languages have really great WebAssembly support while others seem to lag behind a little bit? The TLDR answer to this is that porting a, web, a programming language to WebAssembly is actually non-trivial. Often case it, re it requires a lot of work on compilers and on lower level aspects of a programming language and that can take some time. Uh, but let's go a layer deeper and let's talk about three different kinds of programming languages and what the challenge is for each. So let's start it off by talking about systems programming languages. Uh, systems programming languages uh, are languages like C and C++ or Rust, one of our favorites, uh, Go, another one. These are all languages that Fermion works in, incidentally. Now, systems languages tend to be compiled to a native format that's executed directly by the operating system. And because they're in that sort of native format, a lot of the tool chains that are built for compiling are fairly sophisticated, but also fairly flexible. And so it's been fairly easy to add WebAssembly support to these languages. And also I would say that the WebAssembly ecosystem itself and the original WebAssembly developers tended to prioritize languages like C, C++, and Rust. And so conse consequently, support for them has been very good for years and years. Now let's go from that end of the spectrum to the opposite, and let's talk about scripting programming languages. Now, scripting languages that we tend to think of are things like, you know, Python, uh, Ruby, uh, JavaScript, and, you know, PHP, and many others like that. Now, the characteristics that make a scripting language interesting are that scripting languages, we tend to write the code in raw text files, as we do with any programming language, but we don't compile those uh, files into a binary format. Instead, what we do is we take an interpreter and then we feed those files into the interpreter and they're executed there and then. So there's sort of like a little bit of a, a sort of dynamic aspect to executing those. Now, imagine we're trying to take a language like Python or Ruby and we're trying to build a WebAssembly version of it. What do we need to do? Well, instead of getting the source files and compiling those, we really just need to focus on the interpreters themselves and say, okay, if we can compile the interpreter from its original language into, or from its original form into WebAssembly, then all we really need to do is feed those same .py or .rb text files into the WebAssembly version of the runtime and they can be executed. That's what we've seen happen with Python, Ruby, PHP, and JavaScript environments. So let's talk about the third class of programming language here. And I'm gonna call these the virtual machine languages or you can call them the bytecode languages. These are languages like Java, the JVM, uh, Kotlin, and pretty much all of the .NET ecosystem. And these languages are compiled as sort of an intermediary step. So I write my .java file, I compile it with the Java compiler to a .class file, and then I use the JVM to execute the, the bytecodes that are in the .class file. So there's, there's kind of three moving pieces here instead of the two moving pieces in scripting or the only one moving piece in system programming languages. And consequently, figuring out how to do it well in WebAssembly is a little bit harder. And you know there are a lot of design trade-offs you have to make as you go. Uh, virtual machines often have very sophisticated memory management systems and things like that. So sometimes developers of those languages have chosen to wait until the WebAssembly specification itself has better support for things like memory management. Uh, but all of them are kind of moving along in their journey toward WebAssembly. A lot of them are moving by saying, we'll compile the dot top level uh, language files all the way to WebAssembly instead of taking the scripting language uh, uh, approach and compiling the interpreter itself. So we're excited to see how virtual machine languages go. .NET already has some amazing WebAssembly support and we at Fermion use it fairly frequently. But in 2023, I expect that the top 20 languages uh, that Redmonk kind of surveys and, and updates every year, I think all of those that are, in, that are amenable to being compiled to WebAssembly are gonna be compiled to WebAssembly. Now, of course, there are a few like cascading style sheets. We're probably never gonna see CSS compiled to WebAssembly because it just doesn't make sense. But for all these other languages, I think we can see them already on the horizon making their way into the WebAssembly ecosystem. Hey, with that, happy programming, and I'll talk to you again later.